There he is. Got him. That feels like a decent bluegill. That is, uh, that is a solid, solid bluegill. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another one on the ice. This is probably going to be one of my last videos for the 2021-2022 uh, ice fishing season. We're getting into March now, so we only have probably a couple more weeks left of of ice before the the edges of these lakes start melting and we just can't get on them anymore. But then we'll hitch up the boat and start fishing the Mississippi River and hopefully the St. Croix. This video is sponsored by Two More Cast Tackle Box subscription company, and today we're going to be talking about how you can get your hands on some of these Euro Tackle Euro Tackle Y fries. Cool thing about the Two More Cast Tackle Box subscription is for the first month, your very first month, you can sign up for just one dollar, and you're going to get multiple packs of these Euro Tackle Y fries. Now these are great for ice fishing; they're about one inch size baits, super finesse plastics. But for those of you down south right now. I know March is gonna kinda get into your spawning season. A uh, little cork, slip cork, and uh, actually probably just a little a fixed cork bobber. And one of these on a little jig, gonna catch you a ton of panfish. Group bluegill, crappie. Today we're going after some bluegill. There is a ton of bluegill on these cribs. And I think I'm gonna start off with, I'm gonna start off with the white. We'll keep changing it up to see if we can get the color pattern right, but we we'll start off with the white here. You know what the Two More Cast Tackle Box subscription is. When you sign up your first month, you're gonna get the lure of that month. In this case, is the Euro Tackle Wi Fry. And after that, you're gonna get a bunch of cool lures each and every month. Uh, this is a, a younger company, and I'm working with them to kind of build up a seasonal box uh, for panfish stuff. Uh, so some months you're going to get some jerk baits, some crank baits, hair jigs, a bunch of different plastics. Um, but every single month we're going to try to make it more of a seasonal package. Um, again, working with this company to try to build this panfish style box based on the season. So do me a favor, click the top link in the video description, sign up for just a dollar for your very first month and get a few packs of these in different colors and go catch yourself some crappie and some bluegill in March. All right, let's uh, let's get dropped down there and catch some big old, oh, there's some crappie moving in. There he is. Got him. That feels like a decent bluegill, because it is. Holy smokes. That's a nice gill right there. <laughs> I'm gonna put him on the bump board real quick. If he's bigger than eight and a half, I'm gonna send him back down. Oh man, he is, he's at, if I pinch the tail, he's at eight and a half. Yeah, he's, if I pinch the tail, he's at eight and a half. That is, uh, that is a solid, solid bluegill. To start the morning off, we're gonna give him, get him back. See you, buddy. Let's see if we can catch some uh, little bit smaller eaters. Seven and a half to eight inch range. Those are perfect eating size bluegills. Ooh. I might need to fix my plastic. We'll see if it works. Here comes a guy. Yep. That might be your eater. That might be about a seven inch gill. Ooh, nope, nope. <laughs> That's about a five inch gill. He's going back. See you, bud. Typically when you're fishing for bluegill, you kind of got to wait for them to hit twice, uh, even on some of these plastics. So they'll kind of tap the tail of it, and then either they'll spit it out, and if you raise it up a little bit higher, that's when they really attack it. Um, both those fish kind of nipped at it, I raised it up a little bit, and then they smacked it. There's one. I don't know if he's going to be a keeper or not. Nope. Another little guy. I'll let you go, bud. I'm going to change up colors. Um, I've been fishing for probably about 15, 20 minutes now. And that that bite, the first two hit right away, but I think I just got to change it up a bit. They've been seeing this white a little too much. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to the pink. Here we go. We're going to get him this time. Got him. And that's going to be an eater crappie right there. All right. Choked it too. 
That is fish number one for the frying pan. Gonna have some brunch. He's only about a nine inch fish. Well, we got the bump board. Let's measure him out. Nine and three quarter. Nine and three quarters. So he's gonna fry up good. Throw him back here. Fish number one for the frying pan. Let's see if we can get some bluegill to bite though. I'm not in the line of sight of some of these bluegill. There's very specific locations on these cribs that you gotta drill a hole to get the most amount of fish traffic. Usually the corners are the best, but I might be a little too far into the crib as I'm dropping this jig down. And I might be, I might need to drop it about a foot or two on the outside to see if we can get some more aggressive fish. But that's a good bluegill on the left. Come on, buddy. He's coming. Got him, there we go. Had to wait for that second bite. That is gonna be a keeper, I bet. Feels like it, yeah. There's our solid keeper. He's probably about a seven and a half inch fish. Oh, he's almost eight. But he's not eight and a half, so we're gonna keep him. I'm gonna keep about five. Should be enough for a nice little brunch for the day. Seems like that second bite is kind of what triggers these bluegill. If you notice, he, he bit that first time, but he only got the tail end of the plastic. I kind of had to wait for him to get a second, second attempt at it. I was just resetting and this crappie came in, just flying it. I didn't even get a chance to hit the record button on the underwater camera. That dude came out of nowhere, but I think he's going to be another eater. I think he's a nine and a quarter. Almost a nine and a half. Yeah. He's, he's about nine and a half. There's nine right there. Yeah. You're gonna go in the frying pan. I need to fix that knot. The thing about when you're bluegill fishing, see how this is just hanging straight down almost? We want it hanging horizontal, so you gotta move the knot kind of on the back side. So it sits a lot more horizontal like that. Gives a bigger profile to these bluegill when they're feeding up on it. If you got it hanging straight vertical, there's, it's not a big enough profile and they'll actually lose it. There he is. That is going to be our fifth keeper, finally. Yeah. That's gonna be our fifth eater right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filleting these fish up and cook up some bluegill and crappie fillets for brunch. Uh, it's something that a company was kind enough to send me, old timer knives. Uh, they got the electric fillet knife. They said, hey, test it out. Let me know what you think. So I already charged it up. So the one thing I would recommend that also comes in the box is a car charger. Um, that way you can charge it up in your boat, in your truck. I actually plan on keeping this in my boat. Uh, this is what it looks like. It just charges from the back port right here. And the cool thing, it actually has a battery, if I unlock it, has a battery thing down there. It shows you how much battery it's got left. The box says it has one and a half hours of continuous runtime, which if you're cutting up fish for more than an hour and a half, you had a heck of a day on the ice or on the water if you're cutting up fish for more than an hour and a half. But it comes with the long blade kit, which I really do like. Um, some of these electric knives come with like a shorter kit, which is great for panfish, but if you're going after walleye or white bass or even uh, pike or something like that, you definitely want to have the longer blades. So these pop in no different than any other electric knife. Just pop right in there and lock. Yeah, buddy. All right. Uh, the one thing I will say, it's pretty. So let's get some bluegill up here. Start putting some fillets in the frying pan.
got the pan hot, you can add in a little olive oil. We're just going to kind of shallow fry these fish. It's like it's overloaded with salt. So I like to just get the ones that don't have a ton of salt in them, and I can just add my own to season it how I like. What do we got here? Got some dill. Got some salt, got some pepper. So we're gonna add a little bit of that. Maybe add a touch more oil on this side. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Fresh caught bluegill and crappie cooked up right there on the ice. Uh, do me a favor, click the top link in the video's description, check out Two More Cast Tackle Box. When you sign up for your first month for $1, you're gonna get a few packs of these. This is the, uh, come on focus, Euro Tackle Wi Fry. Um, there's eight in a pack, I believe. Yeah, eight in a pack. You're gonna get, I think it's three packs of them, two, three packs, something like that. Different color assortments. Um, these are great for right now, for up north, getting into March until basically we have ice out. Um, and if you're down south, a bobber and jig setup with that little plastic tied on can be awesome for bluegill and crappie during that early part of that, I guess be mid pre-spawn, late pre-spawn, getting into the spawning phase. So I'm going to enjoy some fresh caught fish. There's nothing better than fresh caught bluegill and crappie on the ice. Appreciate all of you for watching. If you got any comments or questions about the gear that I used, recipes, basically any of my equipment, aqu AquaView, cameras, what I cook these fish on, I will post in the video description or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram or you can use the comment section as well. So appreciate you watching. I'm actually gonna eat this up for lunch and then go back to fishing. So I'll see you in the next video.